Can I live in a house owned by my LLC? I love this topic because it's a yes when you're ready or qualify. So let's talk about three things. The legal implications to do such a strategy. What's, there's pros and cons to it. And really, you don't make this decision. Your tax strategist does. When you don't have one, you call our office because we have the best tax strategist in the world that will make sure you do this right. And it's an officer and director benefit done right. Number two, how having an LLC owning your home gives you good asset protection. Again, there's some upsides, downsides. So let's talk about that. And then number three, the big misconceptions to just setting it up and living there without proper compliance clients and corporate structure and really the minutes and there's a behavior around how you get to live in the house that's owned by an LLC. Number one, the legal tax implications. So you have to know the difference between corporate and personal. So even though you feel like you're personally living there, this isn't your personal home anymore. This is the LLC's asset. So it's very different. So your LLC owns it and it's a rental property of which you then become the renter. And for a lot of you that want your personal home, it's really interesting. Depending on your state, you may lose your ability to have a homestead claim against your property. Great states that actually have good tax strategy allow you to have the LLC and keep the homestead exemption, which is great. But again, it's up to your state, up to the laws of your state. So make sure you have good lawyer and good counsel. Our coaches and mentors will walk you through a really, really strategic way to make sure you're doing it right. And then again, you have to familiarize yourself with the benefits and the liabilities of putting your home into an LLC. So the obvious tax implication is if you are an individual and you move from one primary resident to the next to the next, you've given up your ability to take $250,000 forward. You can do a 1031 exchange because remember, it's sitting in a rental status. It is, it's a rental income. It's an LLC. It's not your personal home anymore. So as a married couple, you can take $500,000 and move to the next property without paying tax. Not if you're in an LLC. You lose those benefits. So really understanding the pros and cons of which way to go. It's what our team will help you analyze and assess and make sure that there are some states putting your property that is whether a rental property that you're gonna be renting from an LLC that you own or your trust could own. There's some states it's kind of rough to do it. And then getting lending is another complication, but all of it's solvable when you're part of our community. We've done it all. We know how to do all these things. When you do the LLC, the paperwork and compliance requirement goes up. Not to say that's bad, but I actually have these cool t-shirts that say do paperwork or be poor. Because when you actually decide to get wealthy and live in corporate structure and live in trust structure, there is paperwork that comes along with it. So if you just want a simpleton life, you should probably listen to Susie Orman and Dave Ramsey because I'm not your girl. Not to say I don't need you to have a complicated life, but to do this accurately and properly, you need to have a good team around you. You're not going to figure all this out roaming around this place called the bathroom wall of an internet thinking you're going to put together a plan for yourself. And if you are out there and you're a lone ranger, good luck. It's a dangerous place for you to be. Number two. So the asset protection by having your home inside of an LLC allows a lot. If anyone's ever heard on your property, they can only get what's in that LLC, which, you know, they could go after some litigation on your home, but that's it. The other benefit though, is your LLC, right? Is a company, it's a rental company, it's a real estate rental company. So it might need landscaping. For example, that's a tax deduction. It might have, need a pool because you're gonna have clients over and they're gonna be entertaining. So you could have a pool clean. All those become tax deductions versus if you own it personally, those aren't tax deductions. So there is some really cool tax strategies. And as the officer and director of a main company, you can have a housing allowance. I mean, most big CEOs, big D1 coaches around the country, they'll have housing allowances as part of their salary. So your housing allowance could be, afford you to actually then rent and live in a property that is owned by your LLC. So there are some very cool tax strategies around it. There are some cool strategies that allow you to have then a lower income, which then allows you to have better health care. So this all ties together, which is why we say it's an integrated plan. Some of you want to come and pick and choose different strategies that I talk about, and then you try to put it together. That's not why we exist. We exist to show you all strategies, and then we're the master planners with you to help you organize and sequence what's right for you based on what you did to yourself. A massive tax benefit benefits and asset protection by putting where you're living inside of an LLC, especially if you entertain a lot. Now, before I go on to the biggest costly mistakes of doing that all wrong, I want you to subscribe to my channel, click the notification button and be here five days a week. So this is a channel for you and your family to start bringing financial and business literacy into your home and start having these conversations. If you have any questions, go to asklaurel.com and ask a question, make a request, join our membership. You can come live. We'll do some mini makeovers, be sort of fun. And let's go to the last point, the comment 
common misconceptions about doing this, I'm actually going to read them because they're very specific. Number one, not every LLC is going to provide complete liability protection. So you got to be really clear about what your corporate documents say. Number two, you're not guaranteed to dodge any tax strategies around this. And I think the biggest one most people miss is by putting it in an LLC, you're now in a 1031 situation. You are not in a, oh, I get to move to my new primary residence and take a $250 or $500,000 tax credit with me. You don't get to do that. So you've got to pick which one. And for a lot of you, if your home isn't worth a really high value, it's better to probably keep the homestead as a protection and you own it. And if somebody BSs you, because it's a huge misconception that insurance will cover it all, it doesn't. And so many times, especially lately, if you haven't seen it, insurance claims are being denied more than accepted. There's a few insurance companies that are really, really great with primary residents or LLC residents, but a lot of them, it gets variable. And your LLC, if not done accurately and not just a solo member LLC, could not qualify for some of the deductions I talked about. So again, this is where you decide what you're going to do. You're going to call our team. So I want to offer you a strategy session with our team. I want you to click the box below. They're going to help assess your gaps. So when you call in for a strategy session, they're not your coach. They're not me. They're just assessing where you might have gaps and problems in your current plan and thinking. And then they get you the right solution, which could be coming straight in to work with me and work at the big table to really comprehensively move out your plan and fill in the gaps. A lot of you have a lot of gaps in your financial situation because you're trying to band-aid together a bunch of experts and they don't talk to each other. It's intentionally disjointed, which is why I created the integration model. So all financial people on your team should talk. Just if you like you're in a surgery center, like your whole team needs to be talking together on your benefit. How often does that happen in money? Typically not. So again, be your five days a week, subscribe to the channel and share this channel with as many people as you can. If you'd like to binge watch, you can earn $750 of credit for watching for 25 hours. So give me 25 hours of your time. First of all, I just want to educate so much of what you're not knowing about money or thinking incorrectly about money. And then I give you $750 credit towards the next tuition that you do with our company. So we'll be back tomorrow with more conversation and content around money and business.